Did you know there's a people alive on planet Earth today that will never see death? In other words, they'll never die. We're gonna find out in this study today who these people are and what qualified them to be a part of that race. Let's talk about it. I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. Hello, I'm Kenneth Dentley and I welcome you to our online channel. You know, um, I just want to say first off the bat, thank you so much for taking the time to watch the videos that we've been making uh, uh, available to you by way of YouTube. And we pray that you are being blessed, encouraged. I pray that you are also being inspired, but not only that challenge to change. You know, this is something that I believe that the Lord has placed on my heart years ago to go on YouTube and just make the messages that he's given me available to you, the subscribers and those that are visiting our website. By the way, if you're not subscribed yet, why don't you just take the time right now to subscribe to our channel. You can just click, I believe it's the icon right here. And you can just see that uh, we, uh, whenever we have a, um, uh, video that comes out or whatever, some of the teaching that we're coming out with or whatever, you'll be the first to get notified and make sure that you have that notification bell clicked as well so that you can see uh, what we're talking about and you can be blessed and taught and encouraged in the things of God. Um, we started out with this journey about maybe 10, 12 years ago. I'm not sure. You'd have to check out um, the videos and see. But we started this journey so that we can be a blessing to the people of God. And that's what we are committed to do. And we didn't do this to, um, to make ourselves rich. We didn't even do this to get some type of income. We just did it simply because I believe that God uh, put it on my heart to do it. And one of the things I'll never forget that he said to me, you know, what do you think that Paul would have done if he had a camera in the Internet? Oh, my God. You know, he had a pen and he had a parchment and he, while he was in prison and he made the gospel available to those people who were uh, 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 not incarcerated like he was, but he made it available to those who... Um, who were um, uh, free. And so I, today I just want to just take the time to share with you the love of God and, and share with you the word of God. And I want to take the time to share with you something I believe that's going to help you and uh, to finish this race and finish it strong. Now for the past two um, messages that I've been uh, teaching on, on this channel, I've been talking primarily about um, you know, the, uh, the, the resurrection and the eternal judgment. And so today we're going to continue in that same vein, but I got something different I want to share with you. And this is about a peculiar people. That's what we want to talk about to you today. A peculiar people. Now, when the word talks about peculiar, it don't mean strange. You know, we might be strange to the world, but we're not strange to one another. And we're certainly not strange to God. In fact, the Bible lets us know that we are purchased people. Praise the Lord. And that's what the word peculiar means. So without further ado, let's get into prayer and then we'll get into the word of God. Father, we thank you so much for this time that we have to share with these, your people. Oh my God, Father, I thank you so much for those that are visiting our uh, YouTube channel for the first time. And we thank you for those, Lord, who are visiting with uh, some malicious intent. And I ask you, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would open up the hearts of everyone, whether they're, uh, they're, they come with malicious intent or whether they come to hear and be strengthened and encouraged in the word of the Lord. I just pray, Father, that you would bless us in our time together. I pray that the Holy Spirit would uh, speak to our hearts, that he would be the teacher. And Father, even though I am using my lips, I ask you to anoint my lips, to anoint my word and put your fire in my belly so that I may share the word of God. I pray that people that are in darkness will come out of darkness into your marvelous light. I pray that those that will come, uh, that, that will listen to this word, Lord, will come out of captivity and come into freedom. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would open up our understanding by the power of the Holy Spirit and make your truth relevant to our generation today and our time. We need to hear from you, O oh God. And I thank you so much for your written word of God, which is the inspired word that you've spoken out of your mouth. Holy men of God spake as, you, as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. And so I ask you, kind Father, that you would anoint my lips and that you would put your word in my mouth so that your people may hear the truths of the living God. And we give you praise and we give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus' name, amen. And God, we thank you. 
Well, now, before we get into this today, once again, I want to just encourage you to uh, get a get something to write with. Uh, I'm going to take the time to put these scriptures inside uh, 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 so that you can read and see that what I'm sharing with you comes directly out of the Bible. And even when I quote scriptures, and sometimes I quote scripture a lot, I'm going to put just the insert in there so, in a lower third so that you can see that the things that I'm saying are truly in the Bible and that you can go and reference them. And so you will see that I am not taking things out of context. I like to be contextual. And that's important because, you know, people can just say, make the Bible say whatever they want it to say. And that's what we get accused of a lot as Bible teachers. And so, listen, I just want you to hear with your spirit ears, not with your natural ears. You got it and digest with your natural ears naturally. But I want you to hear with your spirit. I want you to uh, digest because basically we're going to be talking about something that's very controversial. Actually, it shouldn't be, but it is. And so uh, I, I'm asking you folks who are, you're, you're just trolling the channel so that you can ha pick a fight. I'm not going to fight. I'm not going to fight. I don't, I don't, I'm not here to fight. I'm here to persuade men of the truth that is contained in the Word of God. Now, the scripture says that it's the natural man that receives not the things that are the Spirit of God, but it has to be spiritually discerned. So therefore, you've got to be born again of the Spirit because Jesus said, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, you can't even see it, more or less enter into it. And so these things that I'm sharing with you must be spiritually discerned. You got to see this with the spirit eye. And that means you have to be born again, the spirit. And God has to open up your heart in order to be able to do that. So without any further ado, let's get into the word of God. Now, first Peter chapter two, verse number nine and 10. We're going to start with that one. I'm reading from the New King James version of the Bible. So notice what the Bible says here in verse number nine. He says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people. King James said, peculiar people that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but now are the people of God who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Praise the Lord. Thank the Lord for being the people of God. Now, there's nothing that we can boast in ourselves because this is nothing that we've done. This is all the doings of God. The Bible says that this is the Lord's doing and is marvelous in our eyes. And so therefore, now, even though we've been talking about this, God uh, uh, reveals the fate of men in the scriptures. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter nine, verse number 27, which states, and as it is appointed unto men to die once, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was offered once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly wait for him. He will return a second time apart from sin for salvation. Now, understand people, before I get into it, I want to share with you that there is a race of people on earth that will not die and never need to be resurrected from the dead. Now, once again, there's a people that are presently alive on earth that will not die and they will not ever have to experience the resurrection from the dead. Because if you don't die, there's no resurrection. I understand the Bible tells us, you know, there's well, actually, without a death, there can be no resurrection because you're resurrected to life. OK, so now once again, resurrection and being raised from the dead, two different things. Lazarus was raised from the dead, the, the widow, uh, widow of Nain son was raised from the dead. And there were many others in the Bible. I'm quite sure Jesus did raise many of the dead or whatever. They were raised to life, but they had to die again. Once again, there's a race of people that will not die on this earth who, who will never be resurrected from the dead. And that will happen when Jesus comes to get his people. Now, in this study, we're going to discover who those people are and what qualifies them to be a part of this race. Now, we're going to have to turn to the scripture because everything that I say to you, I have to validate it by scripture. Now, notice if you, let me say this, hear me, please. If you don't believe that the Bible is the infallible word of God, you need to go to go to another channel right now because it's not going to work for you. You're not going to believe this. You're going to dispute and refute what I'm saying. And I'm using the Bible as my basis for not only belief, but my basis for doctrine and teaching. So, which is the same thing, but nevertheless, we're going to go with this word of God because I'm not coming off the cuff of anything that I heard or some, some great, uh, you know, philosopher or stoic say, this is what the word of the living God is. And the Bible once again says, holy men spake 
as they were moved by the Spirit of God. The Bible says the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the word of the Lord will stand forever. And this is the word that we're going to all be judged by at the end. And so therefore, we're going to make sure that everything we say, we have to validate this by scripture. That's why I'm not just, just spouting something off that I heard somebody say. And some things I did hear others say and others teach, but I had to validate it by scripture. And one of the things that I want to encourage you to do is spend time in the word of God for yourself. Stop listening to all these YouTube preachers. Stop listening to all these preachers in church and things like that. It's from all these revivalists and things like that. If you're going to hear what they're saying, make sure you validate those scriptures by the Bible. Don't take my word for it. Don't take the pastor's word for it. Don't take the YouTube preacher for word for it. Take God's word for it. Go to it and make sure it's in context when you read the scripture. Okay. Now, now let's look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to start with this now. We're going to be talking about something that I, I said is controversial. It ain't controversial to me because I understand what God's plan is because he laid it out in the scripture. Now that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 10, 10, 10, what is it? Uh, 29, 29, that the, that the secret things belong to our God, but those things which are revealed are for us and for our children that we should observe the law of the Lord. And so here's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And this is something that's revealed. So here we need to know about it. And 15th chapter, verse number 51, the Bible says, behold, I sh tell you a mystery. King James says show. That's why I almost said show. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Now, let me stop and insert this because you got to understand that when he says we, he's speaking to the church at Corinth. He's not talking about everybody in the entire world. He says, we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. All the believers in Christ Jesus in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, here it is. We want to show you that Paul is referring to all believers that are in Christ Jesus. He said, we shall not all sleep. And when he speaks of the word sleep, he's talking about we shall not all die. You remember Jesus went to Lazarus uh, before he went to Lazarus grave. He told the disciples, he says, Lazarus. Our friend is sleeping. And the one said, you know, well, if he's sleeping, he's doing pretty good. You know, he says, no, Lazarus. And he made it plain. He said, Lazarus is dead. So therefore, uh, Jesus terms it as sleep. And the Bible talks about those who sleep in Christ or sleep in Christ Jesus. And so therefore, he's talking about we shall not all die, but we shall be changed in a moment in the twinkling of the eye at the last trumpet. Now, let's dig into this because we have to understand this. Every follower of Christ. Okay. Every follower of Christ who is alive on planet Earth when Yeshua returns for his church, who trusts in his work of his redemptive work, will be changed. That don't apply to everybody. That don't apply to everyone who said they are Christians. That does not even apply to everyone who said, I believe that Jesus is Lord or Jesus is the Christ. There are people today that make that confession, but they don't have that profession. You follow what I'm saying? They confess Christ but they don't profess, uh, or let's say they, they don't possess him. You follow what I'm saying? They say, I believe, but their action does not show that they are a believer or a true follower or a disciple of Christ. One who disciplines his life to the teaching of the master. And if Jesus is the master, then we ought to submit to his teaching and his teaching ought to be and dwelling in us. And as a result, when the world look us at us, they ought to see Jesus. They ought to see the teachings of the master simply because we obey him. We observe and keep his commandments. You know, if he say love, love ye one another, they should see Jesus himself said, they shall know you are my disciples because you have one, love one for another. And so therefore, once again, when Paul talks about we shall not all sleep, he's talking about all believers in Christ who trust in his work of redemption. OK, so my trust is in the cross of Jesus Christ. My trust is in his name. My trust is in his blood that washes and cleanses me from all sin. My trust is in his sacrifice. My trust is in his father who sent him. So if I believe that he was sent by the father and the words that he was that he spoke was the words of the father, Father, then guess what? If I'm a true believer, then 
I should see that word at work in me. Because once again, if I call, if I say it's it's fire out in the building or whatever, but I'm staying in the building and it's chilling or whatever, I really don't believe. And so once I believe, my actions show that I believe the message that was told me. When the warning came, if I believe, listen, you're sitting down watching TV and all of a sudden you hear the news anchor come on and we we, we would like to interrupt this 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 post your program to bring you this special announcement. You're, there's a, a hurricane spotted, not a hurricane, a, a tornado, that's what I'm talking about. A tornado spotted in your area. Please seek cover now. If I truly believe, now listen, hey, nothing can be going on, but if I truly believe that there's a, a tornado coming, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to, hey, I'm going to seek shelter right then and there because I believe the word that was spoken by the weatherman. You know, he knows more about it than I do. I mean, he's the meteorologist. He's going to read the, the radars and everything like that. And he can see the Doppler radar and all that kind of stuff like that. I don't know about that. Now, I don't have that in my house, you know, and sometimes you may not even see or hear the wind howling or whatever, but you know, it could be on its way to your home. So therefore I'm saying, if I truly believe my actions will show. So if we are truly believers in Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and we believe his message, we believe in him, who, who sent him, guess what we will do? Our lives will line up. Praise the Lord. That's all I'm going to say about that. So therefore, listen, every follower of Christ who is alive on planet earth, as I said before, when Yeshua returns for his church, our bodies will be changed from corruption to incorruptible and from mortal to immortality. We just read that. And so one of the things that we got to understand that the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, let's look at verse number tw- uh, 23. I believe that's where I want to go. Uh, Let's go to verse number 23 and see what it says here. In verse 20, the Bible says, But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep or those who have died. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. As for as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Now notice what he said. He said in Christ, those that are in Christ, they shall be made alive. Now, I want you to understand, folks, when the Bible says those who are in Christ, it means, you remember the scripture says in 2 Corinthians 5, chapter 5 and 17, it said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, He is a new creature. Old things have passed away and all things have become new. So that's what I'm talking about. The born again, new creation in Christ Jesus. Here it is. The Bible says in Christ, all shall be made alive. Not everybody, because there are some that reject his substitutionary work. There's some who reject the redemptive work. In fact, more people reject it than receive it. He already said, listen, this is what he says. He says, it's not my will that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. But God gave us the freedom of choice. And when we choose to do the message that he sent, bless God, he saves us and he puts us in his royal family. But if we choose to reject it, he respects your choice. Remember, Noah was told to build an ark and he built that ark and it was big enough to handle more people. You follow what I'm saying? God brought the animals in, but anybody who wanted to get into that ark could have gotten. Only eight souls were saved. What did they do? They jeered, they poked, they made fun of the old man as he was building the ark on dry land. But guess what? At the end of the day, the Bible lets us know that God shut up the ark. He gave them time. He gave them space for repentance, but they chose to reject him. They chose to have fun. They chose to, you know, let's go down to Noah's today and let's, let's, let's see what he's doing. That old crazy man that's building an ark on dry ground, talking about it's raining. Oh, come on, somebody. But listen, it happened just as God said. And that's what's going to happen to some people. And that's why I'm reaching out to you. That's why I'm throwing out the lifeline. That's why I'm taking the time to pray for you. Simply because I know that there's a day coming when God is going to to take the children of God off of this planet Earth and all of those who are left behind, they will one, either believe and receive and reject. And then number two, they're going to just make fun, take the mark of the beast. And as a result, they're going to be doomed to hell and eternal fire uh, that burns forever. Let's go on to verse number 23. But each one in his own order, Christ, the first fruits, afterwards, those who are Christ at his coming. Notice he said Christ first the first fruit, right? And then he says, and afterwards, those who are Christ at his coming. So when Jesus returns to the earth and see, understand that there's more than just one return to Jesus in the earth, you know, and people think that, you know what, uh, uh, see, there's a difference between Jesus coming to to meet this church or to, to, to meet his bride in the air. And when he comes and sets his foot on Mount, um, on, on the Mount of Olives, 
two different things. And so people get them all mixed up. We're not going to cover that right now, but hopefully in the near future, we'll get into that. So now let's go on with it because you got to understand those who belong to Christ. This is very important. Um, now here the Bible said Christ the first fruit afterwards those that are Christ at his coming and those who are Christ are those who belong to Christ now listen to this the Lord is going to come back to receive his bride unto himself now notice what the scripture says let's just read that let's just don't quote it let's read it the scripture says in John chapter 14 verse number 1 he's talking to his disciples here and he's talking to us as well he says let not your heart be troubled you believe in God believe also in me in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Now, here it is. Jesus is telling the disciples, listen, I'm going to go and prepare a place for you. And I'm going to go when I go, I'm going to prepare a place for you because you are my bride and I've got to build a part, a, 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 a mansion or, or dwelling places onto my father's house. And when I finish with it, I'm going to come back and I'm going to get you just like the old Jewish weddings. And then I'm going to receive you to myself so that where I am, ye may be also. And where is Jesus now? Jesus is in heaven. Now, but if you don't believe that, let me show you a scripture that most people miss and most people don't understand um, when uh, when they talk about uh, uh, the rapture of the church and Jesus coming to catch his bride away. But even in the prayer, the Lord's prayer. Now you say the Lord's prayer. I'm not talking about the I kingdom come that will be done prayer. I'm talking about the prayer that Jesus prayed in the 17th chapter of of John. Now, in John chapter 17th chapter, Jesus prayed for three three people, three different groups. He prayed for himself. That's one group. Second of all, he prayed for his apostles, his disciples, the ones that were alive on planet Earth that day. And then the third group of people, he prayed for us, the ones who would believe on him through their word. Understand. So now let me show you what Jesus prayed. Now, is there a prayer that Jesus ever prayed that has not been answered or will not be answered in the future? I think not. The father will give him anything that he asked for. Why? Because he pleased the father while he was on Earth. He is the, hey man, you follow what I'm saying? He, he walked according to the father a hundred percent. No man has ever done that. He is the, he is the one in a, he's one in a million. <laughs> he's in his own class by himself. He's the king of kings and Lord of Lord. The father have conferred that upon him. He set his king on his holy mountain. Praise the Lord. He is the one that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess to. So now let me show you something what he said. Listen to what he said. Let's look at verse number 20. So we'll start with verse number 20 so that you know that he's talking about us. I do not pray for these alone, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Who word? The disciples' word. That they will all be one as you, Father, are in me, and I in you, that they may also be one in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. Listen to this in verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I have given them, that they may be one just as we are one, I in them and you in me, and they may be perfected in one, and that the world may know that you have sent me and have loved them as you have loved me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you gave me, may be with me where I am. What? He's praying that those that, that Father gave, listen, the Father gave us to Jesus. When you came to faith in Christ Jesus, it is the Father that gave you to Jesus. He made you a part of his royal priestess, a holy nation. Notice what he says, where I am, that they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you love me before the foundation of the world. My God, what is Jesus praying here? He's praying that we may be where he is so that we may behold his glory, not his wrath, his glory. And where is that? In heaven. In heaven. So the church has got to be taken away from this earth to be taken into heaven. That's what Jesus said. He said, where I am, you may be also, that they may behold my glory. And I already proved it to you by verse number 20 that says, I do not pray for these alone, but for those who will believe in me through their word. Their who? The disciples word. Let that sink in. Let that sink in. 
So the bridegroom comes to take his bride away. Okay, now let's go into 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 1 through verse number 10. I can read the whole thing to you. If you are. Yeah, let's read the whole thing. But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write unto you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so come as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Notice what the Bible is saying. He's saying is they and thems. Who's the they and the thems? Notice what he says. He said, when they say, you know, peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them as upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. Well, the they is the them, the they not the us, you know, the they are the them. You follow what I'm saying? <laughs> so they are the ones that's going to what they're going to be caught off God but we're not because we are the ones who are our light listen to what the Bible says he says but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief now when the Bible speaks of the day of the Lord he's not talking about necessarily the rapture he's talking about the day of the Lord the, 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 the tribulation he's talking about the day of God's wrath the day of God's anger in the Old Testament when the Bible spoke about the day of the Lord he's talking about the day of judgment on the earth and so therefore the day of the Lord is a day of darkness and gloominess and, and oh my God you don't want to even be a part of that but the Bible says listen he says the day of the Lord shall overtake you as a thief in the night now, once again, going back to the Christmas and the Thanksgiving analogy. So therefore, if, say for instance, Christmas is the day of the Lord, well, we know that something's going to happen before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving's going to happen before Christmas. So something's going to happen before the day of the Lord so that we escape. Notice what he says, they shall not escape. But if they shall not escape, there's somebody who's going to escape. And Jesus even told us in the word of God to pray that we shall uh, escape the things that are coming upon the earth and stand before the Son of Man. And so therefore, the, the Bible's telling us to pray that we should escape. And there's people that's talking about, well, you got to escape as a mentality. Well, yeah, uh-huh. I want to escape. If you ever read the book of Revelation and find out all of the things that are going to transpire during this particular time on the earth, these last seven years, you don't want to have nothing to do with that. You don't, I don't want nothing. Listen, when the Bible talks about men are desiring to die and death will flee from them. Oh, come on. I don't want no part of that. I don't want no part of none of that stuff or whatever. I, you read the book and you see what exactly. It's not a book to put fear in you, but at least it'll scare something out of you to get you, get you born again. Amen. Praise the Lord. But he says, but verse number four. That's right. I want to escape. I said it. That's right. I want to escape the things that are coming. Don't you want to escape COVID? <laughs> That's why some of you went and got a shot simply because you wanted to escape COVID. So you, you, you think, what do you think COVID is compared to the day of the Lord, the day of God's wrath and vengeance on the earth of all of those ungodly people who reject his son and those who refuse to keep his commandments and his laws and the statutes? Come on, saints. You don't want no part of that. I don't want no part of that. You shouldn't want no part of that either. Glory to God. Verse four says, but you brethren are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and of sons of the day. We are not of the night or nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night. And those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Sounds like the fruit of the spirit to me. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, whether we wake or sleep. Once again, we're living or dead. He said we should live together with him, with him. Amen. That says the same thing. Jesus said, where I am, ye may be also. So therefore, we want to be with him. We're looking to be with him. We're looking to escape the stuff that's going to come upon this world. And we're looking to be with him where he is. Amen. We're up celebrating having the marriage supper of the Lamb while we're in heaven. And while all of the destruction, notice it's seven years. The bride back in the day of the, of the ancient Jewish wedding, they, they seven days, a whole entire seven days of feasting and coming to banqueting and, and rejoicing because of the bridegroom marrying the bride. So you follow what I'm saying? 
So the very same thing, this is what God is saying to us today. And so where he is, he wants us to be with him. But once again, we got to understand that there's a certain group of people who qualify for this and not everybody qualify. People are saying, you know, well, the church is for everyone. That's not true. The church is not for any, everyone. The church is only the born again ecclesia, those who have been called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. There's too much mixed multitude in the church. And there are pastors and things like that that are that are allowing people to just come and join the church simply because they just want to join. You know, it's, it's not a nightclub, folks. It's not. This is not the, the country club. This is not the, the golf cl club. This is the church of the living God. Those who are, you can't even join the church. You got to be born again into the church of the living God. God bless you. Amen. I know that's good preaching, Pastor Dentley. And I know it is, but it's the truth. And some of you probably don't agree, but nevertheless, in love, it's the truth. And the Bible said the truth that sets you free, it sets you free. It's time for us to stop believing lies and live for the truth. Praise the Lord. Let's go on. Let's go on. Let's go on because I can get bogged down and talk about that. Now, let's look at another one. So he comes as a thief to only take what rightfully belongs to him. So that means that you need to belong to the Lord in order for him to come and get you. So if you don't belong to the Lord, you ain't got nothing to worry about. You'll be right back here where they're talking about the aliens abducted the people off the earth. And this is going to be the biggest lie that the enemy have concocted. And even right now, bless the Lord, with all these UFO sightings and things like that, you are being primed in order to believe all of this stuff before the Lord's return. Because when the Lord come and get his church, that's the first thing. The devil got to have an answer for all of the things that have taken place on the earth. See, all of the things that are happening now with the fires raging in the Northwest, the fires raging all over the country in Siberia, in different places all over the world. Fires are, uh, in South, uh, yeah, in South Africa, yeah, because they are rioting and burning down stuff or whatever. But, you know, all of these things that are happening in there, people want to say, they are, well, it's all about climate change, global warming. And that's what they want you to understand that it is. Because they're priming your mind to think that all of these things that are happening around the earth are the famines, the fish kills, all of these things that are happening in the world today. Hello, somebody. The out of control weather patterns and things like that. Yeah, they may be man-made. Some of them are man-made or man development or, or, or whatever. But the thing about man-made weather manipulation, that's right. It could be. But at the same time, it's happening. All these judgments and curses are coming upon the earth. And people, you know, they, they were, well, it's because of global warming, you know, or whatever. No, these are just precursors. The Bible says, calls it the beginning of sorrows or the birth pangs. So we're actually seeing these things play out right before us. And so I believe that these are precursors to the tribulation, the seven year tribulation. So the things that are happening that bef before the tribulation, it's going to it's just going to metastasize. It's just going to be greater during the tribulation. And because Jesus said, listen, it's going to be a time that I've never been like on planet Earth. Amen. So that's all I got to say about that. So you better run. You better run to the ark. You better run into the ark. Stop being with the naysayers and, the, and, the, and all of those uh, people who are, 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 are mocking and scurred, uh, scoffing and, and all of these things. Ah, oh, where's the promise of his coming? Ah, oh, yeah, since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they are. Yeah. Yep. Keep on believing that. But remember Noah. People jeered and they poked fun at him and his sons as they were building that ark. But guess what? The day came. When the rain came down and the Bible said the depths of the earth was broken up. Praise God. Even if they didn't hear anything about rain or know anything about rain. That's not the only thing that caused all of that water. The depths were broken up from the deep and water came from up and water came from down. And it took everything out that was not in that ark. Let me appeal to you, my friend. It's time for you to get an ark. It's time for you to get an ark. Here's this man of God sitting before you right now telling you it's time to get in the ark. Hello, I plead with you. Do it now before it's too late. Because you can knock on that window, knock on your door, knock on that door of that ark. But once God closed the door, that's it. Once the church age is over, you can. Yes, yeah, yeah, people telling you right now, well, you can get saved during the time of the tribulation. Yes, you can. But you're going to pay for it with your life. When they tell you you got to bow to the Antichrist, when they tell you you got to take the number of his name, when they tell, listen, if you can't trust God right now with the jab, without the jab, rather, how are you going to do that? one? Because some places you can't even buy or sell things right now without that jab. So 
If that is a precursor, which I believe it is, so when, the, when, it, when it's the real deal, well, I gotta eat, I gotta work, I gotta have, I gotta make money, I gotta live, I gotta pay my house payment, my, my car payment. Man, forget about a house payment and a car payment. Man, I'm trying to tell you right now, you need to have faith and trust in God now. In Matthew 24, 42 to 43, listen to what Jesus said. He says, 42, watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allowed his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an hour when you do not expect him. He can't be talking about the second coming of Christ when he comes to sit his his feet on, on Mount Olives, because basically when the Antichrist goes into the temple to declare himself God, you can count down the clock and that's going to tell you the exact days of what's going to take when Jesus comes back. So therefore he can't be talking about that because you would know the day or the hour. You follow what I'm saying? You are going to know. So once he does that, hey, listen, the clock, the clock, the clock for 1260 days or 42 months begins. All right, let's go on. In Revelation chapter six, uh, 16, whoo, I got to hurry up. I got to hurry up because I waste enough. No, uh -uh. This is not a waste of time. I spent some time in this. Okay. All right. In Revelation chapter 16, verse number 15 says this, behold, I'm coming as a thief. Notice he says, I'm coming as a thief. He's only coming to get that which was belonged to him. Blessed is he who watches and keep his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. So this is what the Bible says. He's coming as a thief. And those who are not watching and those who are, listen, those who are not watching, not going to know that he came. He'll find out the next day. If it's in the nighttime, you know, somewhere it's going to be in the day in the sun of the other side of the earth. But then for some of us, it's going to be night. So you wake, you, you wake up to all of this distress and all. Listen, <laughs> you know, this is my own personal thing. You know, I, I just throw it out there. I don't believe it's going to be a little sneaky thing, uh, even though he's coming as a thief. But you're going to know the thief was here. You know, if he come busting into your household <laughs> during the nighttime, you try to get to sleep. And all of a sudden you hear someone break into your door. Hopefully you wake up and do something. But when Jesus come to get his church, it's like a moment in the twinkle of an eye. It's too late. By the time you wake up, he's gone. And his church is gone with him. And guess where you are? You're laying in the bed. Some of you will be laying in the bed of fornication. Or some of you will be laying with a woman that you're not married to. OK, and some of you will be married to somebody or laying with somebody who you shouldn't be laying with of the same sex. Of course, that's all right. You think so? He said it's all right. God loves us all. That's right. But he wants us to obey him. Obedience. That's what God's calling for. Obedience. If I know that the scripture tells me it's wrong and for me to continue to do it and expect God to come and take me to where he is. So I no, no, it don't work that way. No, 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 it don't work that way. I don't say I don't care who says it doesn't. I stick with the Bible and they can shut me down for saying it. But that's OK. It's still the truth, nevertheless. And we need to stand for what is true. Jesus is the truth, the way, and the life. Not in that order. He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, I'm saying this in love, man. It might sound harsh, but I'm saying this in love because I really want you to come to Jesus. I want you to do it his way instead of the way of the world. Praise the Lord. Amen. Still love you. I hope you love me. Amen. Now, let's let's notice something here. The Bible says in Galatians five and twenty four. Now, let's let's qualify those people. Galatians. Now, don't take my word for it. As I said before, take the word of God for it. That, that's who we need to listen to the word. Don't listen to the preacher. Listen to the word. Go to the word of God. I'm telling you where the scripture is in Galatians chapter five and twenty four. Here's what the Bible says. He says now notice verse twenty four says this. And those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. Those who are Christ, if you belong to Christ, you, you're known to be belong to Christ because you've crucified the flesh and its desires and its passions. What, what you mean crucified the flesh? What's in my flesh? Notice what the Bible says in verse number 16. He says, then walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you will not do the things that you wish. Here's what the Bible says in verse number 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Which are these? Here it is. Now don't, don't stone me. And some of you, yeah, hey, you get you you people who say, no, 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 no. I ain't against nobody. 
But I'm just trying to tell you, this is what the Bible says. He says adultery, fornication, uncleanness, licentiousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentious, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, reveries, and the like. Of which I tell you before, just as I told you in times past, that those who practice such thing will not inherit the kingdom of God. What part of will not do you not understand? I'm sorry. I didn't write the rules. I have to obey them just like you do. And so don't, don't get on me about talking about, you know, and I don't want nobody to feel like I'm blasting them, but don't get on me because I'm talking about a certain type of people who desire a certain lifestyle. As far as I'm concerned, Jesus talks about the adulterer and the fornicator. So we don't get off, whether I'm heterosexual or homosexual, I don't get off scot-free because God's going to judge the heterosexual as well. He says, adulterers and fornicators, God will judge. So you can't be sitting in the corner going, he, 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 I ain't like them. And that's right. You might not be. But if you and laying in the bed with a woman that's not yours, that you're not married to, then, hey, it's the same thing. Sin is sin. And God said, all souls of mine and the soul that sinneth, it shall die. In other words, it's going to be separated from me forever. I did not write the book. I love you, but I didn't write the book. No, I ain't smart enough. I ain't merciful enough. I ain't long-suffering like he is enough. That, that's why he's God. And I'm just a messenger. But I love you. And I say this in love. Notice this. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2. Now, we're talking about those who God, God, who, who God knows or the Lord knows those who are his at his coming, those who belong to Christ. That's what I meant to say, at his coming. Now notice what the Bible says, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 19. <laughs> Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands, having this seal. This is the thing that separates us from everybody else. The Lord knows those who are his. And let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. This is how you know those that have belonged to the Lord, because those who belong to the Lord departs from iniquity. Hello? I'm, I'm, I'm going to say that again. Those who do not belong to the Lord, they don't depart from iniquity. In fact, you remember the Bible says, many going to say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not done these great works in your name? And he's going to say to them, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. So here's what the scripture says. This is the same thing. He says, the Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, I just gave you a list of everything that's in the Galatians that talks about uh, the works of the flesh. So therefore, if we are indulged in practicing these things right here, the Bible says the Lord's going to say to you that day, he don't know you. You're not going to be a part of that group that's going to go up. That's going to be where the Lord is. He's coming for a bride who have her garments white, not soiled in sin and filth and mire and licentiousness and lasciviousness. And he's not coming for those. In Philippians chapter 3, verse number 20, the Bible tells us that we, whew, let's look at it, let's look at it. Philippians 3, verse number 20 says this, for our citizenship is from heaven. Now let's listen to what he said. He says in verse number 17, he says, brethren, join in following my example and note those who so walk as you have us for a pattern. So he's talking about his lifestyle being a pattern for those who walk with Christ for many of whom I've told you often and now tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. They think of the things of earth and things of the flesh for our citizenship. He's just making a distinction. Our citizenship is in heaven 
from which we also eagerly await the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body, according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Listen, that's what we're waiting for. We're looking for the Lord. And so what do we do? We depart from iniquity. Amen. You remember I said, I think in the last teaching I talked about, we are well known of the Lord and we pray that we are well known. Paul said that to the church, at, I believe it was the church of Corinthians. So therefore, this is the, this is the deal. You know, if we know, if we want the Lord to know us, then we're going to have to depart from iniquity. Amen. We're going to have to depart from sin. If we want to make sure that we are ready for the rapture of the church, we got to make sure that we have washed our robes and made them white in the blood of the lamb. Let me share something with you. Some of you talking about, well, there ain't going to be no rapture before the tribulation. Well, here it is. We are all citizens. We just read that. Citizens of heaven. Our citizenship is of heaven. You ever notice the ambassadors? That they're sent to another country to represent the country in which they came out of or which the, what they have citizenship at. If our citizenship is in heaven, then why are we here in the earth? Why didn't Jesus just take us when we say, Lord, I, I save you, Lord, you save you in my life. But he left us here to get a work done. The Bible says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works that God, which God has foreordained that we should walk in them. So therefore, there is a work that God wants us to do. That's why he left us here. He could have taken the apostles with him when he ascended into heaven, but he left them there because there was work to do. Amen. And so therefore, we are ambassadors in this earth. Paul even talks about it in Corinthians, 2 Corinthians. He's talking about we then as ambassadors for Christ are beseeching you. God's beseeching you through us. He tells us to be reconciled to him. You can read it and find out it's in the scripture there. I'll put the scripture right there at the right there. You see that scripture? But here it is. The Bible tells us, listen, listen, we are ambassadors. But before war breaks out, guess what? The country calls the ambassadors home. If there's a war that's going to be going on with another country, they call the embassy and tell them, send all the, the State Department calls everybody and says, send all of our ambassadors back home. So therefore, listen, before God's wrath breaks out on unregenerated man that's in the earth that rejected his son Jesus Christ that rejected the gospel message that was preached and sent guess what's going to happen God's going to take his ambassador call him home he's going to call them home and we're all going to be gathered together in that great assembly in the sky a few more things I want to talk to you about and then I'm going to let you go amen so for those who are alive those of us who are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord He's going to change our lowly bodies into the likeness of his glorious body. We'll have a body just like his. We're not going to look like him, but we're going to have a body like so, somebody say, well, well, wait a minute. Hold on. No, no, yeah, yeah. Those who are alive and remain, remember, we're going to be changed. We're going to be transformed. In other words, we can be one minute. Pff, next minute, we're gone. <laughs> Amen. All right. So there's a Greek word in First Thessalonians that I want to introduce you to. <laughs> I'm not being sarcastic. But I am saying it. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says in verse number 13, But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep or have died, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means proceed or go before those who are asleep or dead. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be with the Lord. That word caught up, ha, patso, in the Greek, nechatef, in the Aramaic or in the Hebrew. Amen. And this word means a swift, sudden, violent act to seize, to carry by force, to claim for oneself eagerly, to snatch out or away. This is what the Bible's talking about when he's talking about the rapture of the church. And it's going to happen so fast. It's like a violent act. Remember, Jesus said, hey, if the, if the owner of the house knew that, 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 that he was, that his house was being broken into, notice, an act of violence, he was, it's being broken into. And so that's what happens. You're snatching somebody out of harm's way. Because before, before the wrath of God comes to this earth, he's going to catch his church away. He's going to snatch him away. Now, we have Old Testament patterns that prove that. 
Now, before God sent destruction on Sodom and Gomorrah and the five cities around, he sent the angels and told them, get Lot and his family out of there. Lot made it out of there. Two of his daughters made it out of here. But his wife turned around and became a pillar of assault. Listen, I got a teaching that's called Remember Lot's Wife. Go and look at it. Go and look at it. I'll leave it right up there. Go and look at it. Remember Lot's wife. So that's what God did. He sent the angel. Now, Lot went to his sons-in-laws and his daughters because he had to have other daughters or something like that. Or, and so therefore, uh, he told his sons-in-laws, he said, listen, God's going to destroy the city. Let's get out of the city. And the Bible says they looked at him and jeered at him and laughed at him. Or it could be that maybe he, these sons-in-laws were already espoused to his daughters that were, uh, uh, that, that were with Lot. Uh, we don't know. Um, but it, the Bible says that he had sons-in-laws. So if he had sons-in-laws, they had to be married to somebody that was Lot's. And so what did he do? Yeah, yeah, that's what he did. He sent the angel to get them out of harm's way. And the Bible says that while Lot lingered, the angel snatched him. He, he forced him out, took him by the hand, you know. <laughs> it's a lingering Lot. Okay, so now let's close this out. We're talking about the rapture, the hapatso. It's found in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse number 13 through 17. This is what we just read to you. Now, this word is also the same word that you can find in Matthew chapter 13, verse number 19, when Jesus told the parable of the sword that sowed the seed. He said, the wicked one comes and snatches away. Hey, listen, he comes and he does a violent act. He does it before something happens. Why? If the, the Bible says, lest they should hear and believe. So he has to snatch away. That's the same word, hapatso. In Acts chapter 8, verse number 38, the Bible talks about the Spirit of the Lord catching away Philip. The Bible talks about the Ethiopian eunuch. And when, uh, uh, when Philip finished baptizing him, the Bible says that he came up out of the water and he saw Philip no more. What happened to Philip? Philip, well, man, he, he was caught away. The Bible says he caught Same word, snatched away. Okay? Here it is in John chapter 10, verse number 12. Jesus began to tell about how the wolf uh, catches the sheep and scatters them. When the word says catches, that's the same thing, to seize by force, to carry away. In the book of Jude, the Bible says in verse number 23, uh, let's look at this right here. Let's start with verse number 20. He says, but you, beloved, building yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Now, the mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ when he takes us out of here. Notice he says, and on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear. Uh, he, the Bible says, save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. That word pulling in the New King James and in the New International Version, it used the word snatch, snatches, uh, snatching them away out of the fire. And so therefore, that's what it's talking about, snatching them out of the fire. And most of the translations use the word snatching. I don't know why uh, the King James went back to use the word pulling, but it means to seize. It means to, to, uh, to, to carry by force. It means to claim for one's own. So he says, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment defiled by their flesh. This is what the Bible teaches us. Folks. This is what the scripture talks about. Amen. Then Paul talks about in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse number four, when he talked about um, how the um, how the uh, he was caught up or a man that he once knew didn't know rather in the flesh out of the flesh. He's talking about his own experience. He said it was caught into heaven. And man, let me tell you something. Paul talked about how when he talked, uh, went into heaven, he was speaking some things that were unlawful, some things that he didn't even know about. But he says how such a one was caught up into paradise. Folks, these are the words that it's a Greek word, hapatso. And in the, in the, in the Aramaic and in the um, Hebrew, it's the word nechatef. You understand what I'm saying? So now, in Revelation chapter 12, the Bible says in verse number five, he says, and she bore a male child who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up to God and to his throne. That is the same word. The hapatso or nekhatef. Okay. So therefore, the Bible is talking about how they were caught up. There is coming a day when we're going to be caught up to be with the Lord. Now you say, well, that was a sign. Yeah, a sign always points to something in the future. All right. Now, in Psalm 89, verse number 15, the Bible says, Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound, for they shall walk in the light of 
your countenance. The joyful sound, the joyful shofar. When that shofar horn blows, like the Bible says, the Lord shall descend with heaven with a shout. Remember in John chapter 5, Jesus said, there are going to come a day when the dead will hear my voice and they who are in the grave will come up and live. And he said the same thing references in the book of Daniel. We'll talk about that a little later on. But for now, the Bible tells us that they will hear his voice and they will come up out of the grave. They will be resurrected. So therefore, listen, the Bible says the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And so therefore what's happening here, we see that even those who are hearing the joyful shofar, and I believe that when we hear the sound of the trump, it is the ones who are alive. I believe the ones that will hear the voice of Christ, when the Bible says he will descend from heaven with a shout, he will speak and all of the people who are in him will come up out of their graves. Now remember the Bible says that God is going to bring with Christ. So the people who are dead right now, their bodies are in the grave. They're going to be resurrected. Well, where are their spirit and their soul? They're in the presence of God right now. So the Bible says, Paul said, to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. Some people talk about soul sleep. No, that's not where their spirit and soul is. Now, one time before Jesus, it used to be in a place called paradise, Abraham's bosom. It was the top, top layer in the, the place called Sheol. The saints went to the top place and the sinners went to the bottom place. Jesus talked about that chasm that was between uh, 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 the, uh, the, those two layers in, in hell. Uh, in Sheol rather, and he said that that there was so the chasm was so fixed that they could not get to them. The righteous couldn't get to the wicked, and the wicked couldn't get to the righteous. Now, when Jesus raised rose again from the dead and went into heaven, he took captivities captive with him. All the saints, the Bible says he was caught up in the cloud. Who was the cloud? The cloud of witnesses. Those people who, who died believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he was the true Messiah. Those who, uh, yeah, that's what the Old Testament saints, they all went with Jesus. He led captivities captive. <laughs> and that's where they are. And so now when a man dies, well, no, if he's in Christ, guess what? He goes to be with Christ. Amen. All the people who've died, Prior, past, after Christ rose, rose from the dead, they went to be with him. Amen. They went to be with the Lord. <laughs> so that's where they are now. So when the trump sounds and Christ descends, he's bringing those people. They're going to be rejoined back to that resurrected body. Oh, hallelujah. Remember, the Bible says, those who are dead or sleep shall not, or we who are alive rather shall not prevent or go before those who sleep. So we all are going to be caught up. Hallelujah. You might be in your grave right now, but the folks that are in their grave right now, they're going to be caught up. And those who are alive and remain, we're going to be caught up. They're going to be rejoined to their body and we're going to be caught up together to meet the Lord in the air. Amen. So we encourage one another with the Lord. Now, don't forget, we all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. The Bible tells us in um, Romans chapter 14, verse number 10, and it tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 10 as well, that the eternal judgment, listen, we're all going to be judged. The saints of God are going to be judged, not for the sins they committed. Jesus already took care of that. He took care of our sin problem on the cross. But we're going to be judged for our rewards, the things that we've done in the body and out of the body. That's going to happen with a body. Flesh, now I know somebody says, Flesh and bone shall, flesh and blood shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And that's exactly right. But listen, when the resurrection takes place, we don't have that same old fleshly body that we have. We have a brand new body made like his glorious body. It's sown in corruption. It's raised incorruptible. Well, I pray that you've received something. I know I just, man, I got you. I just talked a lot today. I just taught a lot. But anyway, I, I, I pray that you've enjoyed what you've heard. Go back and st- Study and search this thing out. See whether these things that I said are true or not. I'd love to hear your comments about some of the things that you've learned today. Father in heaven, we do thank you so much for your word. We thank you for your living spirit living on the inside of us. Oh God, that we be prepared to go with Jesus when he come. You said, pray that you may be counted worthy to escape these things that are coming upon the earth and stand up, stand before the son of man. So my prayer, Father, is that we be ready, to be watchful, that we'll put away the iniquity and the sin, Lord, 
we'll put away the lust of the flesh and all the things that keep us from qualifying to be a person who is that chosen race, that new nation of people, that brand new breed, Lord, that's going to hear the sound of the joyful shofar. Father, thank you so much for everyone that's listening to the sound of my voice right now. And I pray for that man, that woman right now that's listening to me that's not born again. I pray for that person who's trolling this channel to make comments because they don't agree. I pray, Father, that you soften their heart. Bring them to the cross of the living Christ. Father, help them to know that you so love them that you gave your son for them. And I pray, Father, that you would open their eyes. You said, no man can know who the Son is except the Father reveals him. And no one can know who the Son is except the Father reveals him. So, Lord, even as Paul was going about persecuting Christians, that's in the way. And those who are persecuting us, I pray, Father, that you open their eyes. But I do realize, Father, there'll be some that will not. And so, in the name of Jesus, we bless our enemies and we pray for those who persecute us. We pray just as you told us to do, Lord, those who despitefully use us and abuse us and scandalize our knees and say all oh, manner of evil falsely for the name of us. They don't understand our heart, Lord. They don't understand why we're reaching out to let them know that you love them and you don't want them to be destroyed. Your word said it's not your will that any should perish, but all to come to repentance. So Father, thank you for the grace that we need to endure the persecution that's coming and the persecution that we're experiencing already. God, we thank you. We bless you. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. And God, we thank you. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this message. I hope it has been a blessing to you. Once again, we want you to like, subscribe, and even click the notification bell so that you will receive notifications of future messages that we have we, we have available to you. And thank you for supporting this channel by your comments and by just, um, just, uh, uh, just, <laughs> amen, just uh, watching. And uh, we pray that you share it with other people as well. And then, um, and when you share it with others, as far as that's concerned, take the time to share the gospel with someone. Maybe you wanna share it with somebody that you know that, um, that need to hear what you just heard. God bless you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next week, this is Kenneth Dentley reminding you. That's right, I said next week. This is Kenneth Dentley reminding you. First John 4 and 4, you are of God, little children, and have overcome the world. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. To God be the glory for the things that he's done. Shalom. Until next week. Goodbye.